Joining us via uh, phone is a security analyst, Adib Sani, to highlight uh, uh, the security threats of such comments ahead of the election 2024. Uh, so, uh, Adib Sani, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Right, and you're welcome to Newsbeat. So, um, this, this is where we are today. Um, maybe w w you may want to analyze the whole political season uh, as compared to election 2020, how does the 2024 actually look like as far as inflammable comments uh, are concerned? Well, the stakes are higher. We are dealing with um, a former president here and an incumbent vice president who both are desperate to uh, win power with a desperate following and um, lately, the kind of incendiary comments we are hearing, I think, in my opinion, is more than we had it in 2020. It is early days yet. However, um, we are very much accustomed to hearing certain things that has the potential of causing mayhem um, in this election. Um, indeed, Honorable Brian Champon, a very fine gentleman with great political potentials. He's a businessman as well. Is unfortunately metamorphosing into an extremist with far right ideology of some sort. And he's proud to say that um, he said it at Itiwa, he said it at um, um, Kweu, and he's saying it again. Um, maybe he means well. Maybe it might not be as it appears on the face uh, value. However, a bulk of the supporters would take it on the face value. And that, that I think, um, is very dangerous to our democracy. And we better watch it. And this cuts across the political divide. I wouldn't want to limit myself to just the NPP. We've had some elements within the NDC who have equally said incendiary things in the past. And I think it is high time that we took action and stopped them in their tracks. What kind of action uh, should we take, especially by security agencies? Uh, because we do not know specifically what comments... Uh, political uh, politicians will make that will be considered as inflammable because normally when they make them they usually will come back and and explain and put different connotations to them uh, as against what the public decipher so uh, for example if you consider what he said recently uh, he's made earlier comments about we will never hand over and then now it's about whatever, we, whatever extent we have to go for the MPP to win, we will. And that has received in equal, been received in equal measure by the Deputy Communications uh, uh, Director for the NDC, Malik Bazentale. So um, I'm not sure at what point we will have to step in and what exactly we'll have to do to control this nature of comments. Well, um, recently we had a summit, a Ghana report summit. Um, the IGP was there. Uh, we had other stakeholders, including the president, by the way. Uh, that is where he talked about the Ijapa issue and said it was misinformation and so it should be disregarded and all that. And there was a banter of some sort <laughs> between, oh, between the IGP and um, uh, Mr. Gehat Mensah um, about what really the police's role in this is. Um, in fact, the police has a responsibility to effect arrests when someone peddles falsehood or says things. It can be true. That has the potential of undermining the security of the state. Okay? Yeah. So if you are going to go by the merits of the statements made by Honorable Brian Champon and so many other politicians, the police has a lot of work to do so far as that is concerned. So I think that we have to hold the bull by the horn and get more decisive 
in our approach towards stopping uh, these these statements. Okay. I, I, Secondly, I, I, the political parties have a role to play. I mean, it is very diff it's difficult to have an NDC person say something and the party will come out and say, no, it's not right. Or an MPP some, a, a person say something and the party will say, no, it's not. It's, it's, we are so engrossed with party partisan politics that we lose sight of the truth. But Adib, the, the, the control does not start from the political parties. Political parties are made of human beings. And once there's lack of rule of law, human beings will always do what, they, uh, what benefits them. I mean, in election 2020, in election 2020, uh, these same seminars were held. Uh, the powers that be gathered and spoke about peace. All kinds of peace messages were put together. But we had eight people gunned down during the elections. They lost their lives. Families have not received any compensations yet as far as I'm concerned. And we're almost seeing the same, uh, you know, comments. And police is not acting and you say we will have to, what do we have to do? We, we can't do anything. No, we can't do something unless we don't want to. For crying out loud, Ghana is not a jungle republic. We're a country that is governed by the rule of law. We have laws to take care of every aspect of human life. But like we always say, enforcement is a major issue. However, how do we ensure there's enforcement, commitment? Well, we don't have the commitment. It is difficult getting that commitment. So until we have that commitment, we are not going to achieve anything. So the first step is to have the various stakeholders, including the media, to commit to dealing with the issue. And without it, I'm sorry to say there's nothing we can do. And um, this election, like I always say, is very decisive, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and the whole international community has its eyes on Ghana. I think, uh, like we always say, we are, we are an island of peace in a very turbulent sub-region. I work very closely with the diplomatic community. I hear what they have to say about the country. We cannot afford to let Ghanaians down. We cannot afford to let the diplomatic or the international community down. Right, Adib Sani, foreign policy and security analyst and also the director for the Center for